When I was a student entering college in 1986, I had three ways that I could communicate with other people. I could have a face-to-face -face conversation with them. I could write them a letter. Or I could call them on my land-based rotary dial telephone. Not there yet. Seven numbers. Takes a long time. But students entering college today have a myriad of choices that feel something like this. Email, text, email, text, email, Facebook, like. Email, text, email, text. Email, Twitter, tweet. Email, text, email, text, email, Instagram. Click, click. Reddit, Vine, and Tumblr. Email, text, email, text. Email, Snapchat, oh. Email, text, email, text, email, Pinterest, email, text, email, text, email, Google Plus, hashtag, I love this song. <laughs> America is engaged in a revolution of communication. According to the Gallup organization, one of the most striking cultural and social changes in recent decades is the revolution in a way Americans communicate. We have a myriad of devices now to choose from. And we seem to savor and favor those devices. But how savvy are we at using our ultimate communication device? Today, I'm going to expose some of the limitations of technology-based communication, share some of the features of our ultimate communication device, and encourage you, challenge you, to become communication connoisseurs. Now, technology-based communication is becoming more and more pervasive. According to a Pew Internet study, 97% of Americans send at least one text message a day. And teenagers, on average, send over 3,200 text messages a month. Now, when they tell you kids that you have unlimited texting, that's not met as a challenge. <laughs> We're using our devices more and more. And it's affecting the quality of our communication and the way we are communicating. According to a 2014 Gallup poll, social media, as sites like Facebook and Twitter, are now one of the top four ways that young people send communication. And our communication is taking up a lot of our time. An e-market report confirms that we spend approximately 23 hours a week communicating through our devices, either through email, text, or social media. And Jacksonville, Florida, by the way, is at the epicenter of device usage. According to a 2013 Intel IDC poll, Jacksonville, Florida is the most digitally dependent city in the United States. We use, yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's bad. We use our devices on average 49 hours per week. That's six hours more than any other person in a large metropolitan area. Hashtag, Jacksonville is binge watching. <laughs> but all of this communication through technology is affecting the quality of our communication. According to the Pew Internet study, 82% of Americans believe that their communication has suffered because of technology. But what about you? Have your communication suffered because of technology? Let's take a quick poll to find out. Um, I call this the, the communication assessment of harm and dissatisfaction from using technology survey. The, the kahad foot. <laughs> First question, answer yes or no. You ever sent a text message to the wrong person? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I once had to tell my mom that the picture I sent her was for an art project. Have you ever had acronym confusion? Hmm? What, what does LOL stand for? Or lots of love, right? Some people think it means lots of love. I send a text message to someone saying, I'm sorry to hear that your grandmother passed, LOL. <laughs> Meaning may be misinterpreted. What about NP? Some teens think it means nosy parents. What about SITD? Right, still in the dark. S-I-T-D. 
Have you ever been the victim of autocorrect? Yes? yes? Mm -hmm. And what about this? What about a Facebook post? I'm so depressed, my car wouldn't start, my boss reprimanded me, Mark broke up with me, worst day ever. Like. <laughs> if you answered yes to any of these questions, then your communication has suffered because of technology. And one of the main reasons why our communication suffers through technology is it that depends so much on text and words. But the majority of our meaning is conveyed not through text and word, but through nonverbal communication. Professor Albert Morabian went so far as to say that 93% of our communication for emotion is not expressed through words or text. To demonstrate this fact, I've developed a new performance art because why not, <laughs> called the Emoticon Soap Opera. And I'd like to perform it for you now. Here we go. I will be playing the role of Samantha, while my friend, the Emoticon, will be playing the role of Corey. As the sun sets over the swamps of Lottie, we find Corey and Samantha enjoying a sweet tea on the veranda. Oh, Corey, you know I love you, don't you? And I think you're awfully good looking. Oh, Corey, you are such a flirt. My goodness. But, Corey, I think there's something you need to know. Corey, I'm getting this strange vibe from you. Uh, please, please don't vertical bar me. That's better. Corey, I'm just going to come out with it, but you must keep this a secret, okay? Thank you. I'm pregnant with Mark's baby. Yes. And Mark, Mark is a very jealous lover. Dun, dun, dun. Tune in next time when we see if Corey confronts his emotions or Mark. Hashtag Daytime Emmy. I have a theater degree. I got to put it to you somehow, you know? That's what I'm saying. So now that we've looked at some of the limitations of technology-based communication, let's explore some of the features of our ultimate communication device. Now, I'm excited to tell you that I've gotten approval from the TEDx organization to give away to each of you a state-of-the-art ultimate communication device. Hashtag Oprah moment. <laughs> One has been placed in your seats right now. Yes, it's you. You are the ultimate communication device. And you have some amazing features. We're going to look at a couple right now. The first feature we want to look at is our face. Our faces are amazingly expressive. According to Dr. Paul Ekman, we are capable of producing over 10,000 facial expressions. It's no wonder I can't tell what my wife is thinking, right? <laughs> The interesting thing is that these 10,000 expressions can be boiled down into six basic expressions of emotions. Happiness, sadness, fear, disgust, anger. Oh, I always forget surprise. Surprise. The interesting thing part about this, too, is that these six basic expressions are universal. Dr. Ekman found this out by studying a tribe in Papua New Guinea. Now, this tribe had never had contact with the outside world, and he went and observed how they expressed themselves and how they ex conveyed their emotions. And he found that they used these six same expressions. Hashtag, it's pre-installed. Another amazing feature that we have are our eyes. Now, our eyes carry with them such high emotional value that we often refer to them as the windows to the soul. And research supports this fact. According to a study by Kellerman, Lewis, and Laird, they paired two complete strangers together, and they asked those two strangers to maintain eye contact for two minutes. In some cases, that eye contact was so powerful that the strangers reported having passionate feelings for the other stranger. It's amazing. But eye contact can also have a negative effect with its power. According to a New Zealand medical journal, 
children are oftentimes the victims of attacks by pet dogs because the children maintain persistent eye contact. Even dogs understand the power of eye contact because they feel very threatened and oftentimes react defensively. And if we focus in even a little bit farther, we see the pupil within the eye. Even that communicates. According to Eckert Hess, no relation, the pupil will actually dilate when we're interested in a subject or attracted to an object. So here's a really fun thing to do. Begin talking to your friends about something that, you're, that you know that they're really interested in. I don't know, nonverbal communication. Watch their pupils get bigger and bigger. And then just when they're really into it and you see that they're really excited, switch to topics, a topic that they're not terribly interested in. I don't know, privacy law maybe. Watch their pupil shrink. <laughs> the third feature of our ultimate communication device, which is clearly just incredibly amazing, is the fact that we have assimilation. We have the ability to assimilate to other devices. Now, if my calculations are right, there are about 7.3 billion other ultimate communication devices wandering around the planet. And we are compatible with each of them. As I mentioned before, our facial expressions convey exactly no matter where we are in the world. But we go beyond that as devices, and we actually begin to assimilate. In a study by Char uh, Chartran and Barr in 1999, they had deemed what they called the chameleon effect where in conversation, we will unconsciously pick up the nonverbal behaviors of others. It may be foot wagging or gestures or touching. It might even be smiling. And for example, look at this picture. Look at this glorious young lady's face and that big smile. You can't help but smile back. Stanley West was right. Smile and the whole world smiles with you. So now that we've looked at some of the amazing features of our ultimate communication device, I want to challenge you to become a communication connoisseur. A connoisseur, according to Merriam-Webster, is one who enjoys with discrimination and an appreciation for the subtleties. And I have some suggestions for you to become a communication connoisseur. First, pledge to have the highest quality communication in any situation that you're at. Consciously think about it. Recognize that technology often detracts from our communication. So choose your communication device very carefully. If you don't need to communicate through a device, choose not to. Seek clarification. All you have to do if you don't understand what somebody is saying is say, what do you mean? Hashtag, huh. <laughs> that can help you complete the feedback loop and move your communication to a higher quality. And, of course, use your ultimate communication device more. The best way to get better at it is to use it. Oh, and finally, avoid bulleted lists in public speaking environments. That's always advised. So today we've looked at the limitations of technology-based communication. I shared some of the features of our ultimate communication device, and I challenged you to become communication connoisseurs. There are going to be times in your life when you need to have important conversations. A time when you have an issue with a coworker. A time when you have to settle an argument with a significant other. A time when you have to have a heart-to-heart -heart talk with your child about an important subject. Or a time when you need to express the grief over the loss of a loved one. In each of these situations, use your ultimate communication device and your connoisseurship to have meaningful, emotional, and connected conversations. You deserve it, and your loved ones deserve it too. I, I want to leave you with one last bit of technology and communication advice from an incredibly prophetic Charles Dickens. Charles Dickens said, electric communication will never be a substitute for the face of someone who, with their soul, encourages another to be brave and true.